What is up everyone? In this tutorial, we're adding a table to your page with the help of Elements or Page Builder and Jet Elements plugin. First of all, you have to make sure that you have the latest version of Jet Elements because new widgets are appearing constantly and you may be missing out on something. So first off, make sure that you have updated your Jet Elements and then search for table. It will appear right away and it will look like that. What you do next is you grab this widget and you drop it onto a section where you want this table to be. And what you get is a basic preset consisting of uh, one heading row and one sample row. So first off, you've got three tables in the content tab, table header, table body and settings. Table header will be for this first row which represents the table header and the table body will be for all the other rows in the table where you'll be able to add content to the cells. So let's start off with the table header. So you see that you can add items in here and depending on how many items you will add, the more columns your table will have. So let's experiment and add one more column. Let's call it heading 4. And you see now it is there. Now you've got one more column. You see that to every single cell can be added an icon or an image. You've got three tabs for every single item. Content, which consists of the text and the icon and image if you want to add one. The advanced tab where you can add the column span and set the column width manually. So if you want one column to be wider than others, you just go ahead and you do that. And the other columns will simply adjust to the width of this where you set the custom width. If you want the column width to be set automatically, you simply set it as zero. Then the next tab is style, where you can add the color and the background color of this heading. So we can do it like that. If you want the one specific column heading to be different from the others. But there is also a way to change the background color of the entire table heading at once, and we can do that later in the Style tab. So I'll just leave the same background color as in other columns headings. So here we go. This is how you can add column headings to the table. And now let's move on to the table body, where things get a little bit more interesting. So you have a number of items already created, and you see that there are three cells and one item that is not a cell, but an action, which means starting a new row. Let me show you what it means. So we've got one row and we've got three cells in it. And if we add one more item and the action is set to add a new cell, we, we just we just add some content in there. And here we go. Now we have four columns, we have four cells, and our row is pretty much filled up. And once I want to create one more item, and I said add new cell, and I type in some text, you see what's happening. We don't have a table heading for this column, so this cell just looks a little bit off. And if we keep adding more and more cells without starting a new row, they'll just go on and on to the right. So in order to start a new row and make this cell appear over here from a new row, we need to press add new item 
and in the action drop down choose start new row then what I'll do is I'll grab this cell that I have created before and I move it under the start row item and what it will do it will move my new cell to the new row so once you want to create a new row you create a start row item and then you create new cells like so what I want to do now is to go ahead and create two more rows so my table has three rows in total and a table heading so I'm done because it was pretty fast and didn't have to put any specific content into my table but it is super easy to just go ahead and add some content in here in the tags field but let's actually review the cell item in here and what content you can put in there so what you've got is an action as we have already seen the next one is on the content tab is text where you can add the content that you want to be displayed here in the specific cell then there is also can be a link let's see how it looks so now when I hover over this item I see that I am able to actually click on the item and it will take me to the link which I can type in in here and one more option I've got is the same as I've got in the table heading items is a possibility to add an icon let's just see how it looks let it be like that and you can choose the position for the icon before or after the text that you type in in there there's also an option to add an image let's just see an example and you can as well set the size of an image and the position before or after the text it will look better if I remove the text, for example. So something like that, it can be... It would actually work well if I added the names of the brands in this column. And in this column, there would be the logos of the brands. Let's actually get our text back. And we'll move on to the advanced tab. Here you can set the column and the row span and turn this cell into a table heading which means that for this cell are applied table heading cell style so now you see that it looks the same way as the heading items look as simple as that and in the cell tab we can set the custom text color and the custom background color so if we add the color and the background color within the style tab in the item it will look different from the others but we can actually change the style of all the items at the same time all together in the style tab later so i don't need the link in here and we have reviewed the settings we have for the items and let me just close this tab and move on to the settings tab where i've got two simple options which are the sorting table which enables this filter over here that let us sort the items that will actually look better if I go ahead and turn the first column into the column with the numeration so so I believe I will see it better this way and now let's try the certain option out So now you see that and the responsive table option will allow the table to be scrolled horizontally and you can toggle the responsivity on on mobile tablet and desktop devices so the table looks nice for now and we can move on to the style tab where in the general tab we can set the table width 
I don't have that many rows in there, so when it's that wide, it doesn't look really nice. So I would want to set it to 65 and align it to the center. And the column width can be set in here. It can be either auto set or the fixed width. The border radius. Let's actually go for it. Now let's move on to the table header. I'm pretty satisfied with the color of the text, but I want to change the background color to another one. Let it be like that. And let's align it to the center. And if you set the border type, you can actually hide the border for the header container. Let me show you how it works. So let the color be black so you can see what the difference is. So now you see that every single heading item is surrounded by this border. But if you toggle this option to yes, it actually hides the border for the outer parts of the heading item and only splits them like that. Well, that actually looks nice, so I'll go for this option. And I'll increase the padding at the top to 10 and the bottom to 10 as well. Now it needs some padding on the right, which will also be 10. Yeah, it looks nice and go into the table body. Now we have the settings for the cells. Let's actually change the color, the background color of the table body to a really, really light gray. Pretty nice. And now the interesting option is that it can enable the striped rows option. And this option will allow you to set a specific background color for the even rows. Let me show you how it works. So something like that. If you've got many, many rows, it will look really nice. And you can actually change the text color for the even rows as well, which is really an interesting option. But I'll remove this just for now because it don't have that many rows for it to look nice enough. So the lint color can also be set in a custom way. Whatever you want to do is to change the alignment so all the items are centered. And I would say that I want to move back and change the width of this first column, which really only has the numbers. So why is that so wide? Well, I like it much better. So now the table body again. We can set the border type as well. Let's change the color to white. And here we got uh, the same option that allows us to remove all the borders on the outer parts of the cells. So it only divides them in a nice way. So the vertical alignment can also be set manually. But I believe that we're pretty much done in here. The only thing I want to do is to add the padding again. So we have a little bit more space under and over the items. And that's pretty much it for the style tab. Well, let's go and have a look. That's a pretty nice looking table. We have enabled the sorting option. So we're able to sort this table with the help of these little icons. There's actually a pretty interesting feature here in the table header tab. You can change the style of the icon that you assign to the cells, the style of the image. Here it goes. And you can also change the look of the sorting icon. Increase or decrease the font size and also change the color. But I believe that we have created a pretty nice looking table. 
And that's really good news that now you can create tables in a visual Elementor editor with the help of JetElements plugin. I hope this video helped you a lot. So thank you guys for watching.